Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how we can follow entities using a Unity camera or the Cinemachine in Unity. Now when I say entities, I'm of course referring to this in the sense of the Entity Component System, which is part of Unity's new data-oriented technology stack, which doesn't yet have its own implementation of the Unity camera, so we have to do a little bit of work around, so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. Again, I'm going to be showing you how to do this with a traditional Unity camera, and I'm going to be showing you how to use the Cinemachine camera and if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about with the entity component system and data oriented technology stack and all that I definitely suggest checking out this playlist right here where I go over kind of what these concepts are on a high level and then I give you some tutorials about how to get started with them now really what we're gonna be doing in today's video is essentially syncing the transforms of an entity with a game object and so this applies to much more than just cameras cameras are kind of the main example but there are a bunch of other things that don't yet have its um, dots equivalent yet um, such as like particle systems and different types of renderers and things of that nature so we're still going to need to have those things attached to a game object and then the best way to kind of fake the behavior if you will is to basically just sync the transform of that game object with the transform of that entity so that everything kind of looks like it's happening correctly. Now I know there are a number of ways to actually go about implementing this and so what I'm going to be showing you today is kind of what works best for me. If you do know of a better way or maybe how to improve my method of implementation, definitely let me know down in the comments section below. Also, if you did find this video helpful and you learned something, I really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the Entity Component System and Unity's data-oriented technology stack. And if you do want to download the project files from today's video, you can do so using the link down in the description below. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump on into Unity. All right, so before we jump into setting everything up, I just want to say that I'm using Unity version 2019.3.15, which is the latest version at the time of recording. And then if we go into the package manager, just go to window package manager, you'll see that these are the preview packages I've enabled. The easiest way to get all the ECS stuff, of course, is to just install the hybrid renderer package, and that will give you all the entities and everything you need. Um, so this is currently entities version 0.11. And as far as other packages, that I'm using. I'm using the new Unity Physics package just so I can have this sphere kind of roll around in our world. And this is version 0.3.2. I've also included Pro Builder to just build out this simple little world. And then optionally, if you do want to use Cinemachine, you're going to go ahead and have to include the Cinemachine stuff as well. So anyways, here's the simple little scene that I've created. You'll see that I have these three planes that I created just using uh, simple Pro Builder planes. If we go over to see actually what's on them, you'll see that I just have the standard mesh collider that I got from Pro Builder. If we go to physics body, I just set it to a motion type of static because obviously these are just going to be static kind of ramps within our world. And then of course we have the convert to entity with a conversion mode of convert and destroy. So that will actually convert these into entities so they can interact in the ECS world. So if we zoom in a little here, you'll see that we actually have two spheres. I have one that's going to be our entity and one that's going to be our game object. Um, this game object is basically just a transform and a mesh renderer at this point. And then on the entity, we have a physics shape, which is set to a shape type of sphere, of course. And then under the physics body, we've set this to a motion type of dynamic. And then lastly, we just have the convert to entity script set to a mode of convert and destroy. So overall, it's a pretty basic setup. If we go ahead and uh, hit the play button, you'll kind of see what happens here. So you'll see the entity um, sphere just drops to the ground and it starts interacting with the entity ramps down here. And of course our game object doesn't have any physics stuff on it, so it's just gonna be staying in place right there. So basically what we're gonna do here is on this game object, we're going to have a script that basically just has it point to this entity here, and it's going to mirror the transform of that every single frame. So we'll go ahead into our scripts folder and go ahead and create a new C sharp script. For now, I'll just go ahead and call this the follow entity script, and we'll go ahead and open this up in our IDE of choice. So at the top here, we're just gonna go ahead and include a couple libraries Libraries. So we'll be using unity.entities so we have access to the ECS stuff. We'll also have unity.mathematics because we're going to be using the float3 variable type. And then lastly, we'll include unity.transforms so we can actually look at the translation component of the entity object that we're going to be following. Having a public class called follow entity inheriting from mono behavior, that is all just fine. So we're going to create a public entity called entity to follow. Of course, it's going to be a reference to the entity we want to follow. Next, we're going to have 
a public float three called offset. This is an optional one. If you're using Santa machine, you don't need to worry about this, um, but I'm including this to demonstrate how to use this using the traditional Unity camera. And then finally, we just need a private reference to the entity manager, and that's what we're actually going to be using to get the translation data from our entity. So next, we'll just go ahead and create an awake function, and this is where we're actually gonna set the reference to our entity manager. And we do that by setting manager equal to world dot default game object injection world and then we can just get a reference to the entity manager. After the awake function, we're gonna go ahead and create a late update function. If you're not familiar with late update, it's similar to update in that it runs every single frame, except late update runs at the end of every single frame. And we want this to run at the end of every frame so we can be sure that our entity is going to be in you know its final place that it's going to be before the uh, frame is actually rendered. So when you're dealing with camera stuff, you typically want to include things within the late update function. So first thing that I like to do is just do a simple null check on the entity to follow. And so if entity to follow is equal to null, we'll just return out of the function. So that way we don't get any error messages or anything like that. So once we've confirmed that we do have a reference to an entity to follow, we're just gonna go ahead and grab the translation component of that entity. Of course, the translation component is basically the ECS equivalent of the transform component. So once we have that translation value, we can just go ahead and set that translation value to the transform.position of this game object. And if we want, you can add in the offset. So we'll just go ahead and save the script and come back to Unity. So now on this sphere game object, we can go ahead and drag the follow entity script on here. Of course, you'll see that here's where we can set the offset. Now you'll notice that we actually do not have a public field for our entity, even though we set that as a public field within our script. So the way to get around this is we need to create a custom authoring script, which we're going to be putting on the sphere entity, which is basically going to set the value of the entity in the game object that's going to be following it. So in the scripts folder, we'll just go ahead and create a new C sharp script. And I've just gone ahead and called this leader authoring. So here we have the leader authoring script and um, we're gonna go up here and we'll just include the unity.entities library along with the unity engine library. And then, so as a best practice, there are a couple attributes that I like to add to these authoring classes. So the first is requires entity conversion so it's basically just going to give you a little warning if you do not have the convert to entity script on this game object. And then the other attribute is this add component menu. And then here I've just defined that it's going to be in the custom authoring folder and it's going to be called leader authoring. So if you save this and go back to Unity, we can now go on our sphere entity and go ahead and add a component. You'll see we now have this a new folder called custom authoring. And under that we have the leader authoring. So we can go ahead and click that. You'll see that we now have the leader authoring script on here. So because it's a custom authoring script, we're still gonna be inheriting from mono behavior. Um, we're also going to be implementing an interface, which is the I convert game object to entity interface. Of course, I'm using Visual Studio and it's giving me a red line under it because we haven't implemented all the proper functions for the interface. So a nice little shortcut we can do is Alt Enter and then hit Enter again. And now gives us this public void convert function here. Now this convert function is called when we're actually converting the game object into an entity using that convert to entity component. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a public game object variable called follower object. And so this is basically just going to be a reference to the object that's following it. If you wanted to make this so like multiple objects follow it, of course you can make this a list of game objects. So you see here on the convert function, we do have a couple variables that it gives us. Um, so we of course have our entity. This is the only one that we're actually gonna be caring about. Um, but we also do have the entity manager as well as a reference to the game object conversion system. So on the follower object, we'll just do a simple get component call for the follow entity. And we'll just go ahead and set that into a variable called follow entity. Now, of course, we'll just do a little bit of error checking just to see if follow entity is equal to null. If it is, we'll just go ahead and set that follow entity variable equal to um, follower object dot add component follow entity. So if it's not already there, we'll just go ahead and add it in. And then all we really need to do is just set that entity to follow value on the follow entity script. We'll set that equal to entity. And of course, this is that entity value that we get from this convert function right up here. So now let's go ahead and save our script and come back to Unity. Now you see that on the leader authoring script, we now have this field for the follower object. So we'll just go ahead and grab the sphere game object and we'll bring that right into the follower. So now everything should be set on the entity. 
Now, if we go over to the game object, we can just confirm that we still do have the follow entity script and we just have an offset of 000. So now when I go ahead and hit play, you'll see that now the game object is completely mirroring the transform position. Let me go ahead and pause this. The transform position or translation position, I should say, of the entity. So again, if you look in the hierarchy, we still do have this sphere game object. Of course, I can enable and disable it. You'll see it right there. And you see, of course, we don't have the entity anywhere in there because again, that's how the entity component system works. So anyways, that's kind of the basics of syncing transforms. Now real quickly, let me just show you how to apply that to a camera. Uh, so for now, we'll just go ahead and disable the sphere game object, come over to the main camera here and just kind of move that to a nice angle. And one easy way to get the offset that we need is we can just take the main camera and drag it as a child for the uh, sphere entity, just kind of as a temporary thing. Just go ahead and clean up these values. So we'll set it equal to say four, three, and negative seven. Then we'll just go ahead and drag on the follow entity and we'll just match those values. So four, three, negative seven. And then we'll just unparent the main camera from the sphere entity. Now we just need to remember to go back to the sphere entity and change the follower object to the main camera. So now when we hit play, you'll see that now the main camera is following the entity and it's just keeping that static offset. So the next thing I'm gonna show you as promised is how to do this basically with Cinemachine because the motion with Cinemachine is a little bit smoother because we can kind of sweep the camera around and it's just a little bit nicer overall. But again, the standard Unity camera is of course very widely used and you know just pretty quick and easy to implement. So the main camera, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the follow entity Entity script. So for Cinemachine, it's pretty easy. Basically, we're just going to have essentially an empty game object that's going to mirror the transform position of the sphere entity, similar to what we did before with the green sphere. And then we're going to set that new empty game object as our Cinemachine target. So again, it's kind of a weird workaround that we have to use this like intermediary target. And of course, that's not ideal, but hopefully Unity will come out with a solution in the near future. So anyways, we'll just go ahead and create an empty game object. And I'm going to set this to the exact position of the entity. Um, and then of course, unparent it so it doesn't get converted. Now we have this game object, which is sitting at the exact position of our entity. And I'm purposefully not going to include the follow entity script on here, just to show you that that add component line works as it should. So now we'll go up to the Cinemachine menu and create a new virtual camera. And then basically all we need to do here is just set the follow target to that new game object. And we'll also set the look at target to that new game object. And so now we can take this virtual camera and we can kind of move it around wherever we want. And it's basically just gonna be centered uh, right around that. So we can kind of play with the framing, you know, get it, get it kind of how we want it. We'll say like, okay, cool. We kind of like that angle. And then the final thing that we need to make sure that we do is just go to our sphere entity and we'll set the follower object to that uh, target game object. So again, we'll just go ahead and hit play here. So as you'll see that the sphere rolls down the ramp here, that our camera is following it nice and smooth. Now you see that the camera kind of hiccups and stutters a little bit. That's only because I have Cinemachine running in the editor mode for whatever reason on my computer, it kind of hicks up, hiccups, hicks up like that. I don't know what that word would be. Uh, but when you do create a build of it, it's much smoother. So if you're having that issue, maybe just try creating a build of it and just make sure everything's looking good in there. Kind of annoying, but something that I kind of just have to deal with for now. But hey, if you have any ideas of maybe anything I could do to fix that stuttering, definitely let me know down in the comments section below. And with that, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video. That's basically how we can make a camera follow an entity within uh, Unity, of course, using the Unity Entity Component System. Again, we have to do kind of some weird little workarounds like this because we don't actually have a camera implemented in the data oriented technology stack just quite yet. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots of more videos on Unity's entity component system and their data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can leave those down in the comment section below. Don't forget, you can also download the uh, project files for this video using the link in the description as well. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one.